Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Today we're going to make crepes, or depending on where you live, you may call them crepes. And this is what they look like. They are a thin pancake originating in France, and they have a really nice soft and tender texture, and they can be either sweet or savory. Today we're going to make sweet crepes. Now, if you have a blender at home, you can make it that way, or you could do it, I'm gonna do it today by hand. If you do it, have a blender, just all you need to do is put all your ingredients in the blender and just process until it's uh, nice and smooth, you know, maybe 15 seconds. But if you don't have a blender at home or you don't like to wash a blender, which is always difficult, um, you can make it by hand. So in a large bowl, put one cup that's 130 grams of all-purpose flour, or you may know it as plain flour. And to that, I'm going to add two tablespoons, 25 grams of granulated white sugar. That'll make, give a nice sweetness. Now, if you want to make a savory crepe, just leave out the sugar. And then I'm just going to add a little salt and about an eighth of a teaspoon. Now, again, if you wanted a savory, you could maybe add, you know, a little bit, a couple tablespoons even, even of finely chopped fresh herbs. That would be very nice. Or you could just leave them plain. Okay, so that's it for the dry ingredients. Now, for the wet, you will need two large eggs. Now, we are going to add some melted butter, so we don't want the butter to solidify. So have your eggs at room temperature and then your milk at room temperature. So what I'm just gonna do is break up my eggs with a wire whisk. And then to that, add one and a quarter cups, 300 milliliters of milk. Use whatever milk you have in the house, whole milk, or I tend to use 2% or reduced fat. Again, now have that at room temperature and just whisk it in. And then two tablespoons, 28 grams of butter that's melted and then cool it down a bit. The reason we want everything about the same temperature, because if you put have cold milk and you put warm butter in there, the uh, butter will solidify, which we don't want. And then I'm going to add a teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. Again, if you're making savory, leave out the vanilla. Or if you don't like vanilla, you can just leave it out. So now, I'm just going to make a little well. So now what we're going to do is just whisk our wet into our dry and just do it gradually and try to not get any lumps here. That's why I need the wire whisk, although if you don't have one just use a wooden spoon and really use a lot of arm muscles there. And I'm just gonna, as you can see, if you've ever made like the American style pancakes, very similar batter, the only difference is it's more liquid and we don't have any baking powder. But essentially, same thing. Pretty easy. So now, if I, especially when I do it by, by hand like this, sometimes I get, there's some lumps and we don't want any lumps when we cook our crepes. So what I do is just have a bowl with a strainer and just strain it. You can also do this if you use a blender, but I find you don't usually get lumps when you use your blender. And then just kind of, yes, I do have a few lumps, so it's a good thing I did strain it. Okay. So there we go. Now what you're looking for, as far as consistency, is like a thin cream, which that is. Now just cover it with a piece of plastic wrap. Now we want to let this sit for a bit. That will let the uh, gluten in the flour kind of relax. What I do is I just leave it on the counter for about 15, 30 minutes. Some people, other options are you could put it in the fridge, chill for about an hour, 
or if you want to make it ahead, you can even chill this up to two days. So that's what we're going to do. And when we come back, we'll cook our crepes. So we're now ready to cook our crepes. This is to me is the tricky part because what we want is a really nice soft and tender crepe. We don't want one that's kind of rubbery. So three things that are important, your pan, the heat, and how much batter you put in your pan. So for the pan, you can buy a crepe pan, which I have here, but you don't need one. A frying pan is fine. Non-stick, I find, is the best. It makes things so much easier. And you can use either an eight or a nine or even a 10 inch pan, so that's 20 to 25 centimeter. And what we wanna do is heat our pan over medium heat. Now this is, you want it the right heat. Too hot and they burn and, and too low and they t take too long, get a little rubbery. So medium heat. And what we're looking for is when we're going to put a little butter on there, it just kind of sizzles, but it doesn't burn. It doesn't really sizzle a lot, just a little. So I'm just gonna heat my pan. So once your pan's ready, just give your crepe batter a little stir. You want it, remember we want it like thin cream. So, if, especially if you had it in the fridge, if you take it out and it's a little thick, just add a little milk or water to thin it out. And then, now, some people just like to spray their pan with like a non-stick spray. Some people like to oil their pan. Personally, I like to put a little butter because I think it helps with browning. Plus, you get a little nice flavor from butter. So what we're gonna do is put it on with a, well, you can e either use like just a piece, put a little butter on a piece of paper towel, or you can use a pastry brush, which I tend to use. Now don't use this type of pastry brush, which I have. And what happens is you burn all the nice bristles off and you wreck your pastry brush. And they're kind of expensive, so don't do that. You can buy now these really cute little silicone brushes, which work fantastic. So you might want to invest in one and you can get them all pretty colors. So just put a little, I, you don't need a lot. I mean, maybe like, it's what, a quarter of a teaspoon. And put my, hopefully my pan. See, you can see it kind of sizzles a bit, but it doesn't go crazy and burn. And then, Sure, you get it all over the surface. If you need a little more, now don't have too much. If you have a little too much, then use a paper towel and just take off the excess. So that looks good. And now batter. I have a nine inch pan, 23 centimeters. So I find about three to four tablespoons of batter on that. So adjust. We want the right amount of batter because we don't want our crepe too thick. So lift your pan, hold it in one hand, put it in the center and swirl it around. Try to make a circle. I don't always make a perfect circle. And then put it back on the heat and cook it. Now, mine is not perfect. So what you can do is, which I do, is just kind of cut it off, fix it up if you want it perfect. And if you had like too much batter, you can pour it off. But if when you pour it in, it sets really too fast before you can swirl it around, then your pan's probably too hot, so turn it down a little. Conversely, if it takes a long time to set, then you probably don't have it hot enough. So kind of look at your first one as kind of a test crepe. It's kind of a dud. And so now we're going to cook it probably one, one and a half minutes. But again, that depends on your heat, your pan, everything. So don't go by time as much as how it looks. You want the top to be dry. Sometimes the edges start to curl up. And if when you look underneath, it's kind of golden brown. Now, you can use all kinds of things. Just use a little spatula like this, or you can use this, or I actually have, which they're pretty cheap, a little crepe turner, which I really love. And so, and some people actually use their fingers to turn the crepes. I did try that and burned myself, so I don't recommend it at home or be very careful because you can burn yourself against the sides. So I'm going to just check this. Oh, actually mine is quite done. So you can see it kind of 
and flip it. Looks pretty good. You will see a nicely browned lacy pattern. You're not looking for a solid brown, you're looking for that lacy pattern. And then cook it not as long, maybe 15, 30 seconds. Sometimes, depending on your heat source, you, it's not usually even. You might want to turn your pan to get a nice even. As you can see, one side with the other. So probably don't have it really even. So I'm about ready. So I take it off the heat and flip it like that. Now, as you can see, the first, the second side is not as pretty as first. It's just this is what you're looking for, kind of this spotted. That's how it looks. Now, normally you can just stack them up. If you were going to serve them right away, just keep big cooking them. Stack them up, and then I just usually put a cloth over. You put some aluminum foil, or you could just put it in a very slow oven to keep them warm. And what you do is, again, add a little butter, adjust your heat as necessary, and just keep cooking and stacking. And then you can serve them. Now, I have some here that are actually cold because I made them yesterday. There's a couple of ways you can heat them up. You can put them in the oven, but what I'm going to just show you how to do, because they're, they're cold, is I'm just going to get some heat and just take my crepe and just put it in the pan and just heat it up. And you know what? You won't, you won't know the difference. So if you're going to have company and you don't want to do it, like you don't want to be standing in the kitchen, just make them ahead of time. That's a great thing about crepes. So, and then I just, that's nice and warm. So I have another one. So that's, that's another thing to do. Now, what are we gonna, how are we gonna serve? If you're having company over, there are so many ways you could do this. I have like a blueberry sauce. There's all different sauces and fruit sauces on the site you could do like blueberry, I have strawberry, I have raspberry, you could do lemon curd, you could do, I have a, like jams, homemade raspberry jam, of course, you could use chocolate sauce, Nutella, is that hazelnut chocolate spread is excellent with slices of banana, but you know, a lot of times what I like is I just take my crepe, and this is so simple and so good, Take a lemon, and you know, before you cut a lemon, you just want to press down on it to release the juice, and then I just put some lemon juice over the top, as much or as little as you want, and a little sugar, as much or as little as you want. And then there's a couple of ways to do crepes. Let's see what I'm doing here. You can just fold it into quarters, which is what I usually do. Or the other way is you put your filling and then you just roll it up, kind of like a cigarette, like that. That's the other way. And then you can put it on a plate, or I just pick it up and eat it. Oh, dripping now. Oh, that went down the wrong way. That is so nice. You have the lemon, you have the sugar. They're so soft and tender. It's really a wonderful thing. I, you could have them for breakfast, brunch. You could have them after a meal. I mean, have fun with them. Your kids will love it. So enjoy. And until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com.